Okay, well, good morning um, and welcome to the second international conference run by the BDD Foundation. Um, it's my privilege uh, to be the chair of, of this charity. My name's Rob Wilson um, and I'm just going to do a very, a very few quick introductions and hopefully we can get on with a very interesting day. Uh, for those of you that are into Twitter, we're, today we're using the hashtag of BDDF, BDDF2016. Uh, please do tweet and let everybody else know what's going on. Um, so we've had a, an interesting year this year. Uh, one of the things that the BDD Foundation has become is a sort of central hub for journalists who are interested in BDD. Um, and we've, we've participated in quite a few different TV programs and radio interviews and magazine interviews. Um, a few highlights include um, a film called Bigorexia, Never Buff Enough. And uh, that program won, I think it was last week or the week before, a, a Mind Media Award, which we were rather pleased with. Um, I'm sure many of you would have seen the program was on um, again not last week, but the week before, uh, with featuring our very own Alana, who'll be speaking later on, um, called Nobody's Perfect, which had a really, um, I think, a very excellent, sensitively handled presentation of BDD. Um, and we've done other various documentaries on muscle dysmorphia and, and lots and lots of interviews this year on what the media are calling selfie culture. And I must have been asked a good half a dozen times by different journalists, does selfie culture cause BDD? Um, I think it's safe to say that selfie culture does not cause BDD. It's quite a lot more complicated than that. But we will, we will have um, a few more, I think, documentaries and TV programs coming up soon, including one um, which we're kind of excited about, which we're following someone with BDD through their whole journey through seeking help and, and treatment. Um, and one of the reasons we think this is important is that very many people find out about BDD for the first time through uh, TV programmes and magazine articles. Sadly, it's often not because of healthcare professionals identifying that someone has BDD. Very often it's the person who has BDD finding out about it and having to persuade their GP or psychiatrist that this is the problem that they've got and therefore they need a very specific kind of treatment. Um, so we'll, we'll continue to, to work quite closely with the, the media on these kinds of projects. One of the um, really amazing things and rather saddening things in some ways about um, some of the donations we've had this year uh, to the BDD Foundation is that they've come from friends and family members of people who have lost their life um, because of BDD. Um, and this, of course, is part of the big challenge with BDD that um, it's a problem which ostensibly focuses on the very superficial, such as a flaw in one's appearance, but actually has an incredibly high suicide rate um, and is one of the most destructive of all of the psychiatric problems. Um, so we're very grateful to uh, Louise Nicol in particular uh, for all of the fundraising um, because that's part of what's made us um, be able to put this conference on this year. But we've got a, um, a very interesting day lined up. Uh, very, very uh, pleased to have Professor Paul Gilbert um, come and speak for us today. We have some excellent inspirational speakers. Uh, we have sessions on uh, muscle dysmorphia and male concerns, uh, on the eating disorders and body image, weight and shape concerns, skin picking, um, and we have for the first time some drama sessions uh, at the conference. Uh, we have, again, Professor Gilbert doing some practical work on compassion-focused therapy, um, and we have uh, Dr. Anne-Marie O'Connor and Dr. Emma uh, Baldock on taking the first few steps towards uh, tackling BDD. And that's really trying to consider for the first, well, not necessarily for the first time, but trying to hold in mind what it's going to be like to treat what feels like an appearance problem as if it's a psychological problem. 
and how to kind of get started with that. Um, and we also have sessions on children and adolescents and another drama session. And then later in the day, we have um, a number of, of support groups. Um, and I'd really encourage people to try and use the support groups as an opportunity to uh, connect with other people who are going through the kind of same kinds of difficulties uh, related to BDD, be that as a parent or a carer or someone who has the problem. Um, I'd suggest trying to think of today as much as you can as trying to find some sense of community um, within people, individuals that have BDD. Um, because that definitely seems to be from the things that people tell me um, about their experience of having BDD, that's something that feels quite lacking. Um, so rather than necessarily just making things about questions and answers to uh, the professionals, I'd really, really encourage you all to try and think of it as, as creating a network and a community. One of the things we do have today is a film um, by uh, Andrew Koji and Dominic Coates um, called um, Hall of Mirrors. Just a sort of headline about that is that there is um, a, a little bit of bad language in it. And If you know Amarina well, you definitely will. Um, sorry, Amarina. But, and, and there's, a, there's a degree of violence, there's a short spat of violence in the, in the film as well. So um, if you'd find that particularly challenging, we'd suggest uh, perhaps stepping out at that point. Uh, but this is an interesting project because it was something that uh, was proposed at the last conference and... It's rather wonderful to see it have been brought to fruition since then. Um, okay. Oh, well, just another thing to mention in terms of um, headlining things that are available today. Uh, we also have uh, Kira from OCD Action available in the uh, uh, exhibition area, uh, who will be there to help people and give ideas and support people in setting up more support groups. And that's been a very, very important function of the BDD Foundations up until now, is that a sort of central part of what we do is um, either run support groups or support people in setting up support groups. Um, and I imagine that a number of people here have already attended some of those. But if you, if you live further afield particularly, I got sent a tweet the other day saying, do you ever do anything outside of London? And so we'd love to, please do. Um, and you know, we'd love to see support groups across the country um, and we will certainly do what we can to support people setting those up. So a few thank yous. Um, obviously a huge thanks to the um, presenters and workshop leaders that are coming to give up their time today. Similarly to, the, to our inspirational speakers, who um, I think are often a, a really a key element of, of these kinds of conferences. There's nothing like hearing the story of recovery from somebody who's actually been there and done it. Professionals like myself can talk about the, the principles of treatment and the research and the models and so on, but someone who's been there and, and gone through it can talk about it in a level of depth and, and validity that we simply cannot. Um, I obviously want to extend a huge thank you to all of the trustees of the BDD Foundation. Um, we're a very small group of individuals who um, meet as often as we can across the road at um, uh, the UEL, the education, what is it? Education, yeah, University of Education. Of education. Um, in, the little, in the little coffee area there, um, doing what we can to Keep, keep the foundation going and set up events such as this. Um, in particular, I'd like to thank Amarina, who's standing over there, who has absolutely worked her fingers to the bone um, over the last many, many weeks to make this happen. This definitely would not be happening today without, without you, so thank you very, very much. Um, thank you, SOAS, for accommodating us. Um, huge thank you to all the people that have over the last year, uh, raised funds for us and, and given us donations. Again, we would not be here without those. 
Um, and thank you to the storeholders and um, exhibitionists and artists who are making today that bit more interesting in the breaks. One of the things that I'm really, really proud of this year is the fact that we produced this book called Reflections on Body Dysmorphic Disorder. Stories of courage, determination, and hope. It, it, it is not worth going into just how long we spent debating what we'd call this book. Um, but <laughs> it's an incredible um, compendium of people's experiences of surviving BDD, um, or what it was like knowing someone who was going through BDD. Um, and it's very, very moving, um, very inspirational, uh, and at times very, very touching. And I think that um, the editors were going to come up and say a few words about this, but they're not going to do that. <laughs> you want to do that? Yes? Brilliant. Um, so I'd like to introduce to say again. Yeah, if you don't mind, Nicole. Um, so I introduce Nicole Stackenberg, who is, um, and, and Sergio Petro, who can tell you a little bit more about the project. <coughs> Good morning, everyone. It's so lovely to see so many people here. Um, and for the last year, we've been working on this project. Um, and the books arrived yesterday at lunchtime, so it's all been a bit fraught. Um, but anyway, here, here is the book, and they are available today um, at special conference price of £10. So the book contains 36 stories of people either that personally have struggled with BDD or have a family member that has struggled with BDD. As the title suggests, the book really is steeped in a lot of courage, a lot of determination, and a huge <coughs> amount of hope that actually is possible to move beyond a struggle such as this. Um, as well as the stories, we've also got some artwork <laughs> from the contributors, beautiful artwork. Um, photographs, people have been very brave in contributing also their photographs. And what we've done is we've looked at the core themes that seem to run as a thread through a lot of the stories and then written sections about those. So things like artistic propensity in BDD, disordered eating in the context of BDD and early life experiences such as bullying in the context of BDD. Um, there's too many people to thank, um, but we... We do thank Catherine Phillips, Professor Catherine Phillips, author of um, The Broken Mirror, for writing the foreword for the book, um, to Professor David Vill and Dr Rob Wilson for writing the introduction for us, um, Steve Kaplan for um, designing the front cover, and to Joe Campbell and family for making this book financially possible to actually um, get on the road. Um, but mostly the contributors, we thank you with all our hearts. It's not an easy um, journey to share, and the candour with which you've shared your stories is truly astounding, and has, I think, had both of us in tears at, at different points in reading them. Um, so thank you so, so much. Um, Catherine Phillips calls this a landmark book because it's the first book written primarily by people with body dysmorphic disorder. And if I can just read a couple of sentences to finish from Catherine Phillips. So she says in the foreword, I believe that the future is bright for those who have BDD. We have made tremendous progress and effective treatments are already available. Research advances are accelerating at a rapid pace so we will learn more in the years to come. I hope, like the courageous authors of this book, more people will come forward to describe their experience, reach out to others, and advocate on behalf of people with BDD. And then she goes on to say, to readers who think they might have BDD, please don't suffer in silence. Share your experience with others and reach out for support. Remember you are not alone and help is available. Empower yourself by giving recommended treatments a try, be persistent. If one treatment doesn't work, try another. Remember that most people can get better, and most importantly, <coughs> never give up hope. So please come and see us, and tremendous thanks, especially to yourself, Sergio. We um, edited this book together, and it's been a real pleasure to work together on this project. Thank you very much.
much. Um, <clears throat> we are, of course, a charity, um, and that means we need to raise funds. Um, there are many, many more things that we would like to do as a charity. I mean, a central point for us, of course, is, is keeping our website, website going, um, keeping it up to date with information, good information, good advice. Um, and as I say, we're already doing things like providing workshops and um, keeping up uh, social media and keeping in touch with the media to try and keep awareness up. But this is a very big problem. And we were a very tiny little charity. Um, a lot of people imagine that we're been a, we'll have an office somewhere. We don't. Um, a lot of people imagine that we'd have a full-time member of staff. We don't. Um, we have some, our, our only regular spend is paying someone to work for us one day a week, um, which relative to a lot of other charities is, 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 is nothing. Um, so this is me asking, really, for some help, if at all possible, uh, to help us raise some funds. Um, and the important thing to remember about doing things like fundraising, be it a bake sale, um, a charitable auction, a fun run, uh, anything really, is that oftentimes by, by raising funds, you're also at the same time going to be raising awareness, because we were doing it for BDD. Um, and that, I think, is something that we'd really like to see extend and evolve. And that would then mean that we can help to fund projects such as we have a, uh, a real interest in trying to find a way of doing a structured self-help support group so that we can provide a manual um, for, a, for something that is going to be more approximate to actually uh, treatment for BDD that people can do as part of a support group. Um, but we've got tons of other things we'd love to do, but at the moment we're very small and have very limited funds and there's only one way that can really change by raising more funds. Just a couple of small examples of, of this. Um, one is a bucket that someone put in a tuck shop and raised £170 for us. Um, we also have Kitty here today selling us some Christmas cards. Um, really, really beautiful hand drawn Christmas cards. Please take a look. Special prices for the ones. <coughs> Um, but of course the main thing is we hope that you have a, a very enjoyable, stimulating and informative day. <laughs>